Hey guys, I am Red Herring, and we're going to be looking at a StarCraft II first person game today. And uh, so I hope you guys are excited. Uh, this is the first the first, first person game I will be casting on the uh, on the new Battle.net interface. So I know it's been out for a couple weeks, but uh, and I, I know uh, if you guys have played much StarCraft II um, in that time, you, you've been accustomed to this new interface. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I'll, at the end of this video, go over some of the changes that I like and dislike about the new interface and kind of kind of share my my uh, viewpoint on that stuff but uh, just gonna kick it off with just the ordinary cast so if you're just here for me uh, casting myself playing then uh, you know that's what I'll start this off with and then at the end I'll tack on my thoughts on Battle.net um, so yeah it looks like I'll be going again so let me make sure he is Zerg on the map Cloud Kingdom and uh, fairly well mannered just to uh, shoot off the good luck have fun so yeah immediately um, I'm sure if you guys play at lowest settings you notice that the uh, it does look a little bit prettier the uh, the shading on the line of sight it used to be very blocky well, not blocky, but very, uh, not very artsy in the way it was depicted. And there's been some debate as to whether this new look actually cuts down what you see, uh, just because of the way they implemented the how it looks and stuff. And I'm not really sure if that's the case or not. I do know it looks a little bit prettier, so I guess that's a okay change. Um, all in all, like lowest graphic settings, which is what I play on uh, when I ladder. Um, it does look a little bit nicer, and the creep looks a little bit different. Everything looks a tiny bit different, um, if you know what to look for. So I don't see a pool yet, which gives me the confidence to go for a later forge, because there's absolutely no reason to get a forge early uh, if you don't see the pool. So there's the pool right there, so let's stick that forge down. Try and keep this guy active, patrolling around. And just watching the mini map for that drone, which is gonna come down right about then. Though, so, yeah, that was way too early for a Nexus, or for a hatch, unless he's going for that third location, which could very well be the case. I'm just gonna jump over there. Oh! What do we have here? Okay, so there's a couple ways I can go about doing this, and I'm gonna pick. My personal favorite, which is not the Cannon Rush, though I could very well do that, I'm going to just play it macro and go for that two-gate zealot thing. I was almost not going to do that, do that two-gate zealot thing, just because... Oh my gosh. Uh, this is interesting, so he might lag out. Um, yeah, I, I was going to go for that two-gate zealot thing, and I, I realized I did that a lot in my Zerg, my PvZ games, and so I wanted to kind of just do a straight-up two base timing push maybe if I can secure the third that'd be nice um, but those are very very powerful um, adding in some immortals doing this robo like seven gate robo six gate um, I know hero does a lot of those um, there's some there's a lot of protoss it's kind of it's kind of the trend oh, okay so it didn't like that that was scared me for a second there um, yeah, it's kind of been the trend lately to go for uh, for uh, for timing pushes for all ends and stuff. Oh my gosh! What the fuck? Uh, what the? F um, what's the C for? I don't know if that's a typo or not. The F is not even. Oh, well, the F is kind of by the C. In any case, I will be going for <clears throat> a. Uh, a little two gate pressure. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not gonna go for two gate pressure. It's too too late for that anyway. I'll just be going straight up and uh, trying to nail nail this guy just with uh, a two gate uh, or not two gate. Ugh, with a uh, robo robo like six gate or robo seven gate or something like that. So, this is, uh, this is gonna come down to if he, you know, uh, since, 
since Bros have been doing it a lot lately, it kind of comes down to if he can realize that I'm actually going that build, because I'm sure he's countered it numerous times before. But we'll see. So there goes his Overlord. Oh, there it goes back. <laughs> Just checking to see if I'm producing anything, I suppose. I'm maybe looking for that forge to see if it's upgrading, which it indeed is. So I'm going to scoop my, uh, my Zealot onto that tower. And uh, hopefully crank out the Stalker as soon as possible. There's the Stalker. Oh, actually, he lets the Zergling die. An attentive player will always snap that Zergling back, so it's interesting to see in ladder games whether the player actually is able to save that first Zergling or not, because it tells a lot about how good they are, I feel, I feel. If I'm able to kill that Zergling first, ooh, he has a lot of lings for like no reason. And he's going to try and save that guy, I really don't want to let him do that, but I feel like he's going to get away. So. Just gonna have that zealot on the tower that that unfortunately did get away. Um, kind of boosting out uh, plus one, so I'll have plus one when I go for my attack. And I'm going up to three gas here, but uh, you don't really need more than three gas. I, I tend to go like three gas. You'll add a fourth gas later, but you have to get all your gateways down first. Otherwise, it's no point in collecting that much gas. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of sentries if you go uh, for this push anyway, and getting that fourth gas is a little bit excessive, I feel, until later on. Now something that players sometimes do is they'll actually fake um, like a stargate opening by getting the gas where the overlord can see it. Like getting that gas right there super early on, so it looks like uh, it looks like I'm teching like really hard. Uh, which is an interesting, an interesting approach. Um, which I did not do in this game, but um, so I'm going to be getting out a warp prism after my observer, and uh, I want to kind of prevent this overlord from seeing literally everything. But we'll see if that actually ends up being the case. So he does see the robo. I don't think he sees those other gates there, but we'll kind of see. I hope he didn't. Uh, and then right off the bat, after that warp prism is done, I move out with it and uh, my force here, and then just to feign some pressure. I see him starting to make some roaches here, so he sees it. He sees it right there, making some more stuff. Oh, okay, so he's just now getting Lair. So he's gonna have... He's just now getting Lair, are you serious? So, just doing a little, a little bit of annoyingness. Saving the, uh, the units as, as I can. Didn't lose anything. Maybe I can snipe off this queen. Yeah, we'll get the queen, so that's going to be annoying for him. This is just... This is good, solid mechanics right here. Save everything. That queen is actually tickling me down dangerously, though. Oh my gosh. I don't think I'll be able to save it. Let's see if I can kill it. Ah, no! Oh, that was a mistake. Okay, so that's kind of unfortunate. I should have landed him earlier. Uh, and the uh, and the units earlier. So okay, what about that and um. Yeah, so now I'm just bulking up um, on units here, trying to uh, defend my third because that is obviously one of the very, very key points of PVZs. Can you defend your third or will you just lose to Roach pressure? 
So I was able to do, I think, a good amount of damage there. And yeah, that is the correct timing. He just wants to make sure I do have that third going up. If I didn't have that third, then he would just be bracing um, for an all, a super all in. Um, but I am going to go for that third, so it's, he knows it's not any sort of massive all in. There is a lot of freaking roaches. Holy crap, that's a lot of roaches. Okay, and here comes the moment of truth. Lots of stuff needs to be producing. And that is how you hold the third. So now my third is basically secure. You may be thinking, well, you know, I didn't actually kill that many roaches. How do I know it's secure? Because of this. Once he, once he kind of loses that forward momentum there, there's really not much he can do. Um, like right here, I'm just like chunking up his units um, with these wonderful force fields. And it's really like he killed cannons. That's, that's the extent of his damage, which is totally fine. That is totally, absolutely fine. So I'm going to rebuild those. And he's going for a nice little double pronged. Oh, shoot. I'm going to use that immortal. Oh, no, I'm not, because I'm not tempted. So he's actually not microing his zerglings to fight microbes. And I'm compartmentalizing his stuff decently, so... Fighting on all fronts. Look at that, that was beautiful. I actually haven't lost too much stuff. Just have to be careful of running by us here. Wow, he pulled the queen, so that's a mistake. And all his overlords are chilling over there, so I don't know what that's about. All I know is I'm about to kill like every single roach here. Oh, I still ran out of energy, but this is an interesting way. <laughs> Fast overlords, he's going for some sort of drop. It's so odd. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that upgrade, which sucks. But I'm gonna totally destroy every single, every single roach here. That we might get the nexus. Oh, he's gonna get that nexus. That's gonna hurt. Man, this guy is. This guy's pressure is. Really kind of putting a damper on what I'm trying to do here. He's just rallying. He's literally just rallying. So, I do have a butt ton of immortals, so, a lot of gas, just making a lot of sentries. Sentry immortal is a lean, mean composition when fighting uh, roachling based armies. So, because he's been rallying in so much stuff, I know he does not have much of an economy, which is basically the only plus side to this massive amount of aggression that's been displayed here. If he was tricky, he would switch into mutas and just own everything. Um, because, you know, I've been going such heavy focused um, anti roach production. And look at that. It's called timing. It's just gonna own everything. Prevent some of his stuff getting up here. And then. Chop up this stuff here and they didn't do much to my economy that time, my friend. And I got my expansion back up, so he's just I don't know. 
I don't know. I I mean, this is a this is definitely a deadly tactic. This is really tough to defend all that multi prong aggression. But I feel like all these lings coming out. He's just he's out for blood, man. Not the best force fields, I will say. So many freaking immortals. Mineral field depleted. I have a lot of immortals. Once I get some archons going in here, it's going to be tough compositions to uh for him to beat. In fact, I'm almost thinking I have too many immortals. <laughs> I have a lot of immortals. This is a lot of immortals. Going for that fourth there because why? Why the hell not? And I'll be uh, still rallying in stuff. So this is an interesting way. Very hyper aggressive style that he's going for here. This is called. Needing lings um, for all <laughs> all the immortals I have. So many immortals. They actually did a good amount of damage there. I really want to kill that last infested. I think I'm gonna get it. Yep, there he goes. And now. Some archons in here. Archons, very good units. <sighs> well, it's gonna make him use fungal energy, I guess. You know, what? I'm not sure if I have this game. Honestly, this guy's really good. Like he knows, he knows what he's doing. Templar, but purely for feedback. Holy crap. I just feedback a lot of stuff. Like he has lots of lanes. I think I'm fine. I think I got this attack down. Oh, he just killed like all my probes. I think I got this. I think I got this. I just owned this whole force. I have a lot of Archons. What's that? Lane drop. You can deal with that. Maybe. So I'm gonna lose that Nexus. Puts a damper on things, definitely, but in his main very much like to get up to ram. Feed back the queens. And no GG, he just leaves. That was quite an epic game, I will say. So I was talking like an under undertone like most of the game. I was actually quite uh <laughs> quite scared frankly for my life as this guy was definitely really good he was so aggressive you guys saw the multi-pronged attacks he had going for him uh, much of the game look at his army value he would just get his uh well he would get his economy up and then bam sending wave after wave after wave at me constantly and he just broke upon my defense and in the end I was able to come back take the game wow so hope you guys enjoyed that that was uh that was quite epic and uh I think mainly what it came down to is he didn't have tech to follow it up with. Um, those infestors, uh, that was his attempt at tech, but uh, he really needed to either do more damage or or tech faster. Um, he kind of overcommitted to his hyper aggression and his tech came out a little bit late. If he had infestors earlier, 
would have been a different story or if he just went like a different route if he stopped being so aggressive and got those infestors out at when he did but just had a beefier army um that would have also helped i'm not also sure if he had good upgrades i'm pretty sure he didn't i had decent upgrades and uh overall i was just able to counter his aggression and uh steamroll him at the very end so um, but I'm not quite done with this uh, video, I just want to talk about Battle.net. So as you guys know, um, this is what the new interface looks like, and uh, overall I really like it. I know a lot of people are like, oh it looks cheesy, it looks kind of weird. I like it. Um, the thing that I don't like, there's one glaring issue, and that is the ladder, the profile system. So if I go to my profile, this is what I look like, and, uh, and look at this. So the whole point of having icons like these is so you can tell how good you are, but these don't differentiate um, in terms of uh, in terms of how where you are in the league. Like I know they have symbols. Like if I go to this thing, look, it has these little wings. It lets me know I'm top 25. If I got top eight, I would have the the stars and everything. It look fancy, but if I go to my profile, it just shows this, and it's not a hack. It's not a glitch. Everyone has this. There's no differentiating between where you are in a division. If you go to someone's profile, you just see master. And, and and even worse is that this shows your highest career finish. So it doesn't even show your current league. So people that don't play um, like 1v1 ladder um, in this season will still have um, the their, their 1v1 master thing here. It's just kind of weird. Um, and, and that's kind of the biggest complaint that I have here. It, they need to get those differentiating things in there. In terms of everything else, it's it's pretty much fine. So um, that's really all I wanted to talk about. There's been a bunch of complaints about that. And uh, oh, I guess another thing is that if you go to your, your match history and then you want to look at where your opponent is in like in like a, like in terms of how many points he has, you actually can't do that very well because you actually have to go here. You see this and you can't actually click on that, which is super annoying. You have to go to ladders, then you have to go to current season, Wings of Liberty, 1v1. So it just takes a lot more steps than the old system. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I will uh, put more content out soon. Um, and yeah, see you guys next time.